before I uh, before I proceed, I, I really do want to say uh, a few words about Jerry Schimmel, whom I consider a friend and a mentor. Uh, as you know, Jerry actually wrote a, a small booklet called Costa Rica Tokens. And I start collecting Costa Rica tokens as I am from Costa Rica. And uh, I uh, I start collecting Costa Rica tokens. I was collecting coins already, but I was start collecting Costa Rica tokens out of the fact that I missed my place, I guess, or something, you know, as so I guess expat or something. And it turns out that Jerry knew a hell of a lot about Latin American tokens and Costa Rica tokens in particular. So we, we spent quite a few hours, I will say, um, talking about tokens in general. His passion, one of his passions was Latin American tokens. He knew he had a lot of them. And so it was my passion as well. So I uh, I will miss him dearly. He was, uh, he was a mentor, a good friend. We will hang out on his house on occasion with Mark uh, William Clark, who is not here, or Michael Wenner. Uh, he was tough as nails to deal with. He never sold cheap, but, but he was a great guy. Every token had a story. And when I did not know where the talking was from, he will consult one of his many books in his house and find out where the talking was from. So I will miss him quite a bit. Uh, I've learned from many, many of you in this group present here and those who are not present from you, I learned a lot. Uh, and from Jerry, I learned quite a bit as well. So I will, I will just, uh, uh, I would just say that I will miss him quite a bit. Okay. So what, are, what the hell? so what are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about ship shearing tokens in the American Southwest. I have to say that I just didn't know what else to do there other than it's not exclusively on the American Southwest because I check on what American Southwest means in the dictionary and it turns out to be a little bit different than what I had in mind, but that's what it is. That's my American Southwest. And so Today, we're going to be talking about ship shearing tokens from a very general perspective. You recall my last talk to this group was about a coin that was countermarked in Cuba. Somehow it got, a, it got through Costa Rica and then it ended up being a, 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 a saloon token in San Francisco. So this time it's going to be a lot, many, many tokens and the historical context and the socioeconomic context of tokens. So this is the outline of my presentation. Um, we're just gonna talk a little bit about ship, ships in the United States, uh, what, what ship ranching is all about, what the products are, this is very easy. Uh, we will talk about ship shearing techniques and then because all these things and the crews, the ship shearing crews, all this is reflected on the tokens and the denominations in the information, on the information that you have on the tokens and so on and so forth. So the first three bullets are basically, I guess, the setup of the talk or the meat and bones, which is the tokens I'm gonna to be talking about. Um, so ship is not an American animal, if you will. It was brought here by, uh, by Coronado via Mexico. Uh, so he burned his ship not to go back to Spain because he was deciding conquering Mexico, but he took out the ships, the ship that he had in those ships uh, before he burned them. Uh, and uh, the first one that got here was the churro, which is what you see to your right there. And the churro was, is a coarse woolled animal. The wool from this ship is not particularly pricey. It's not particularly sought after. And what you really care about here is for the meat, uh, not for his wool. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it provided the sort of the, the setting for the Merino ship, which is, was introduced in 1801. It came directly from Spain. Uh, the truth is that in, in many states in the United States, particularly in the South, uh, ship uh, and missions and religion and all things that come with it are interrelated. Many of the ship ranchers, particularly in New Mexico and Colorado, were Catholics um, uh, who, who related this animal. Uh, if you look at Catholic 
paintings and stuff, ship plays an important role. It's right next to, there is always uh, a ship next to some saint or of, of sorts. So ship is an important component in all things, including religion. Uh, English and Dutch also brought ship in the early 1800s. Uh, and 1850 and 1890, Texas, not the most Catholic place in the world, although it was to be a, a Spanish colony, uh, nevertheless advertised for ship ranching because they had plenty of land and um, they needed uh, they needed uh, uh, pop to populate this land, which um, it, they were having a hard time populating. So they, it's like a homestead of sorts. So what are we concerned with this presentation really is, uh, is what you, what I'm marking here uh, because the great super majority of tokens, ship shearing tokens come from these states, particularly Texas and New Mexico. Uh, very few Arizona or California tokens, which we'll see later. There is an Idaho token, but that has a Texas root, as you will see later. And yes, there are ship shearing tokens in Colorado. I don't know any from Nevada or Utah, and I certainly do know and do not know any from Iowa or any part of the or any any west uh, eastern part of the country, eastern north, so to speak. So that's exactly the geographical context of the talk today. Uh, what is it about sheep, merino sheep in particular, uh, but they're goats too? We'll see later uh, that we care about. Well, first of all, uh, cattle in Texas and sheep in Texas were a constant source of conflict. Uh, the state was promoting both, but sheep ranchers and cattle ranchers didn't get along particularly well. Uh, uh, there was a, you know, always a, 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 a water resources to be used. The cattle drives, sheep, you did not do sheep drives, but you did do cattle drives, so drives. So, there was a lot of uh, impending on, deep, on other people's lands and so on and so forth. There was always conflicts there. Uh, the true matter is that sheep today is a very uh, a small percentage of what can be considered rural or overall agricultural rural uh, value in the United States. It's very limited. It, it follows boom and bust like most commodities. Uh, but it has been on a bust for a long time. So you don't see a lot of sheep. I think we have now currently about 600,000 heads of sheep, which is really a small number versus what it used to be. Um, and the reason is that subsidies to sheep are being uh, eliminated. So back in the 1840s, you got a uh, thousand acres for 1000 sheep and you needed to just to buy the land three cents per acre, go figure. Uh, which the land being much more expensive now, that's why sheep just doesn't pay. Uh, cattle continues to be to a degree, to a degree in certain states and on part of the federal government subsidized. So cattle basically won the, the battle here. Uh, what is sheep used for? Well, wool, we know that. It's very good, it's for all kinds of things. Caskets, uh, oil spills control, uh, it's very absorbent. Is very elastic and, resi and, and resilient, of course. Wood is an efficient temper temperature regulator, as many of you know. It's flame resistant, for the depends on the way you process it. And well, of course, also dairy products are part are result of are, or are derived from sheep. The tokens that we're going to see are going to reflect exactly what I have here in front of you. In Texas, you had large sheep ranching operations. Uh, Texas was extremely well connected to national ma national markets, even some, some wool and some meat being shipped to, the, to Mexico. Uh, in Texas, most shearing was done by crews, group of people who were traveling around the state, going to different ranching operations and doing the ship shearing. Uh, uh, most of these folks did not own an operation, a ranching operation. I've done my research on some of the names that appear on the tokens and in, on census and on other types of data. They appear as owners of, of, of shipping or of a shearing crew, or they appear as not as ranch owners. Uh, you rarely see that. 
uh, but that is a very Texas thing. In the United States, in, in Arizona, New Mexico, and California, ship operations were much more, much more smaller, and uh, uh, they were less connected to markets. So a lot of the products were consumed in the state, and um, and most of the shearing was supervised by a ranch owner. Uh, these operations being smaller, right? So, uh, so you see here a very big difference. By the way, I gave this talk or a version of this talk um, almost 13 years ago <laughs> to PCNS and I have added far more information. Last time it was all about Texas tokens and this time we, we compare them to other tokens. So what does a ship shearing operation looks like? And there you have it. Uh, is a temporary tent usually is either a tent or a car that had some kind of top coming off it where the activity takes place. Well, you see there is a folk, it's a gentleman who is uh, placing sheep, uh, placing wool on containers that will be then loaded to trucks and, um, and, uh, and, and then taking elsewhere to market. Uh, this tent uh, will be there only during during ship shearing operations. Uh, this is what a quote unquote modern ship shearing ship shearing crew would look like while they were doing the job. And if you pay attention; they are using electric electric shears here, and uh, we will see how that also shows up on token denominations. Um, the techniques to, to do the ship shearing thing is, uh, this is used up to today. That, that's the shear scissors, if you will, uh, on, on like a rodeo, rodeos and other types of activities that look similar. But I got this token from 1663 from England. Uh, 6063 year being here, it's just upside down. And you look at the shears there, these are the fingers, right? And the shears, they look a hell of a lot like the shears that were used up until the 40s and the 50s. So techniques did not change much. And you have to be very good. We will see how the animals are sometimes impacted by people who do not use this uh, equipment properly. So uh, things did not change for a long time in terms of techniques until of course we got the, the electric shear, uh, the electric uh, you know, machine to, to do the ship shearing. Uh, and this shear uh, is electric uh, and you can process much more ship than you will using either of these, uh, using this, this, this hand tool. So what's going on here, uh, the ship, is brought into a, 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 an enclosure like I, the one that I showed you before. And after they sheared the sheep under the old techniques, they suffer a lot of bruises. And so there is a, there is a treatment where they put medicine on the, on the sheep skin, which at this point in time has no wool on it, uh, to make sure that this, this sheep doesn't get infected or uh, uh, doesn't develop some kind of disease, worms that that uh, find the ship as host, uh, because you know you want the ship to be alive and kicking for the next time around, which is usually twice a year. Uh, depends on depends on how the ranch is managed once a year or twice a year. So they apply this. Um, this is done today, even because even if you were to use this tool you still sometimes, damp, uh, you know, the skin gets, um, the sheep gets, gets hurt. Uh, then of course you have to, at this point in time, and I'm using these old pictures because the tokens that we're gonna be talking about are, you know, from this era here. Uh, and then you have some, um, some you have to uh, eliminate parasites, uh, get the sheep healthy, as healthy as you can to uh, make sure that uh, it produces wool in the next the next time around. And finally, you do the grading of the wool. So this is a guy here uh, sitting on top of that cylinder lookalike uh, uh, structure. And he wants to make sure he is the trusted person 
this guy. From the, uh, actually he's from a ship, uh, ship sharing crew, but he's the trusted person who makes sure that the wool going into that container qualifies or is indeed of the quality that will be stated and written on the, on the, on the sack itself. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Texas ship shearing. Uh, I would say that Texas is the biggest state in terms of sheep up until 1960s. Uh, sheep, sheep ranching took place all over Texas, but the tokens, funny enough, are or, originate here. And it's not that there were no sheep elsewhere. It's not that there were no shipping shearing crews elsewhere, but for some reason, and we, will, we can talk about that, uh, most of the shipping, most of the shearing crews were from the south sort of west part of Texas. And in fact, uh, I don't, for, for lack of a better name, I call this the ship trail, but it, it should be a ship shearing token trail because uh, this part here that I'm showing you is this. And the great majority of tokens from Texas come from this area. And so we will see tokens from Uvalde, Del Rio, Lancry, Sanderson. Uh, are there tokens from elsewhere? Yes, Osona is somewhere here, I think, or sort of, yeah. And then there is there is uh, there is uh, uh, Sonora, Texas. Uh, we will see. But I'm willing to bet that at least seventy percent of tokens, just to say a number, a great majority of tokens from sheep shearing tokens from Texas come from. Um, so Texas tokens are very important. You collect those things, you gotta have Texas tokens. I mean, you could collect the two or three tokens from Colorado, I guess, or the four or five tokens from California, but that's not much fun for those of us who like to collect a particular thing. So, uh, so Texas are crew types. We'll see what a crew is. There is a strong geographical context, as I indicated. And there are even blood and family correlations among talking issues. What do I mean by that? So, well, again, this is a picture of, of another crew there. Um, I, this picture is kind of fun to me. I mean, I don't know, this, this sheep here doesn't look particularly, she's looking out there and saying, I don't know if I wanna go there, but uh, so this is a crew. If you notice, uh, I, I'm just gonna put it out there. You don't see why blue eyed dudes uh, shearing, <laughs> sheep shearing. Uh, most of these were Mexican or second generation Mexican or third generation Mexican. And as we will see, the owners of the shipping crews were the same. So what was a shipping crew look like? Uh, it was a group of men no females allowed, or at least I have not seen a picture of a shipping of a shearing crew, ship shearing crew that is that has female members. Um, a, the size could be twenty people, it could be four people, depending on the size of the flock that they were uh, sh uh, ship sh doing the ship shearing activity. Family membership was common. Uh, the crew captain was the boss. This is the dude who pay, who had set up the schedule to go around different places in the state to do ship shearing. And uh, oftentimes the captain position was passed on to a son or a relative. Although, uh, and then very important, of course, you had the cook, we'll see later. There was a medicine man, a person taking care of crew members who got sick. And these positions actually existed, but it was a business. You could sell it. Uh, and that's why you see countermark ship shearing tokens sometimes. You could sell it uh, and bought, um, you could buy the, the, uh, the, the, the business, the name of the business uh, as any other business. You will. And it will come with equipment, of course, the routes, the customers and so on and so forth. So this is what a shipping, uh, a ship shearing crew looks like. Uh, there are plenty of pictures on the internet. I just happened to, to, to choose this one here. Like I say, mostly males, uh, lots of Mexicans here, if not all of them, uh, or at least second generation 
Mexicans. This is a picture of a cook there that I took from the Texas Historical Society uh, Library website. And what does a ship shearing token looks like and what kind of information does it have? Uh, this is a token from Uvalde, Texas, which is right here. And um, a ship shearing token will have a lot of information on times. For example, here you have the address and I welcome you to go and Google that address. It's an empty lot. Uh, the name of the crew captain, in this case, Mr. Reyes, Moises, the crew location, this is important. This is not the ranch location. This is the crew location. And then of course, the denomination on the other side. There are some tokens that you will see later that have even the phone number, right? Uh, of the, of the, of, I, I suppose the owner or the or the captain or the house. Um, um, this one is good for one sheep. This one is good for a hundred sheep. And likely this was when uh, electric shearers were introduced. Folks were able to shear more sheep uh, with of course electric shearing. So. Uh, and again, you can see it's a sheep shearing contractor. This is not a ranch. And Mr. Reyes is related to Moises Reyes. Um, Lidio, Lidio was Moises' song. And I, 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 there is a lot, you, you could write tons of papers on the, just the, on the relationship between the different crew captains. Uh, you could write papers about how they pass on the business and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna do that here. I'm just gonna point out that there is a lot of bloodline relationship here going on. This is Fermin Reyes. Uh, the funny thing about this token, of course, is that, I don't know, there is an error here. It doesn't say sheep, but it says cheap. I don't know, he could own a casino too. Uh, you know, I have no idea. But this one again has the phone number. It has all the information here. Uh, uh, Sheep shearing tokens come in all shapes of form. This one is not round, of course, as the other ones. Uh, this one is a scallop, uh, different number of sides and so on and so forth. Um, this is from uh, Del Rio, Texas, which is right here. And again, this follows closely the border, right? So this is the border, the Mexico is right here. This is Texas. So this follows the border. Um, this is Mr. Martinez. And if you see all the tokens from Uvalde, Texas are from Reyes family. Uh, the Rio has about three Martinez, different Martinez tokens. Uh, I think I only have one here. Uh, this is from Del Rio, which is in Valverde County. Uh, these are two different tokens, but they look awfully similar. Uh, most of the tokens were made out of either brass or aluminum. And if you see, this is the only reason that I wanted to show you these tokens is because these are, to my knowledge, and they probably are more, uh, pictorial tokens. This one has a chip. And so does this one. And it's almost identical. Uh, obviously made by the same company, if you will, but different, uh, different, different shearing crews. This is for the Cardenas family, and this is for the Gomez and Sons family. Again, I, all I, Mexican last names. Feel free to ask questions. Yeah, and move along. I ask a question, uh, Federico. What, Please. what was actually the function of these tokens? Were they like uh, used as pay to the crew, or did they have a yes. different function? I'm sorry. I should have said that from the beginning. Ed. Thank you for, for doing that. This is to pay the shear. This is to pay one of these guys, right? So they will go on shearing and as they will be shearing animals, they will be claiming, they will be given tokens. And then those uh, tokens were used, what, like at the end, company store no, or at, Right, at the end of market? the week, yeah, uh, no, at the end of the week, uh, there will be cash, there will be change for cash. Okay, so the, 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 the crew captain didn't wanna carry cash around. So he will pay with tokens. And at the end of the week, I assume he will go to a bank of sorts or something and grab some money 
and go back and and pay the pay the the pay these folks, right? And he will pay an equivalent, an equivalent for for a sheep or for a hundred. And sometimes, if if a person will be very good at sheep shearing, then the person by Wednesday will have tons of one one sheep tokens, and he will go on and say, "Look, I uh, I have I have forty tokens here for one sheep each. You know, give me two twenties or give me two fifteens, and there are tokens like that. So uh, so this will be used to pay the pay the Pay the sheep shearer. I hope that helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, this this all this will be to pay. Uh, uh, again, Uvalde, non Reyes, but nevertheless, Uvalde, Texas. Bertram is not on the trail that I show you, or what I call the sheep shearing trail, but is uh, to the north west of those places. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. If it is pays either for one sheep or one goat. And um, I don't know. Anybody knows what the difference between a sheep and a goat is? At least some difference. There's some, there's a few. No, nobody. Okay. A goat eats leaves from high up on trees and bushes. A sheep is a grazer. It eats from almost, you know, close to the ground. And if you really wanna know, a goat's tail is sticking up and a sheep tail is laying down. So there is all kinds of difference. I don't know what Mr. Felon, who doesn't sound, I have not followed this particular sheep shearing uh, crew captain, uh, but um, I don't know what the business was. I, I, I will assume that goats are slaughtered; they are not used for their wool. So this could very well be a slaughter situation here that you know they, they would process goats. Uh, but goats are not the, the 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 hair or the the wool, if you will. It's not it's no use for any purpose that I'm aware of. Not all Texas tokens are good looking. The, here you have a token from Sonora, uh, from Benjamin Castillejo, very rudimentary token. token. Uh, this is, I am not 100% about the attribution. I bought it on a very old envelope. I think it comes from Jerry Adams collection somehow uh, with his writing. And then you have, uh, another token that is not particularly well made, if you will, from Chon Flores. This is a very rare token. Um, another uh, sh ship shearing uh, uh, crew captain. This one is probably from 1900, no more than 910. Most of these tokens we're looking at are were, were used in the 1920s or 30s. Some of them are earlier. Uh, but certainly no more than 1950s. And then you have this token from Idaho. Um, again, uh, you can tell it's from the early 1900s, but look at the last name, even though it is Jerome Idaho is from the Reyes family. So I, I have no follow up this token either, uh, but I will assume that this is, he is related to all those Reyes from Uvalde, Texas. But it's interesting that it's in Idaho. Um, hey, Federico. Yes. Um, goats do produce mohair. The mohair is a type of thing that's used in uh, like rugs and certain things. So they're okay. Uh, and I know they they don't originally come from the U.S., but they may have been imported. So that is one kind of wool that was used from goats. So, you know, I, I suppose, I don't know if that's the for this, but I know that's right. where mohair comes from. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, I will follow up on that. I have no idea, to be honest with you. I just, uh, uh, I know goats are appreciated for their meat, of course, just like sheep as well. So I, I thought that it was just, uh, but it could very well be that they're shearing goats as well. So, yeah. Thanks for that, then. Uh, Arizona was not much of a, a, there is a lot of sheep 
ship in Arizona, but it was really a Native American, um, a Native American uh, activity uh, related and brought by the missions or by the Padres. Uh, there were not a lot of large operations going on in Arizona in terms of sheep shearing, but you know you can see a type of shearer there uh, being used. And actually you can see barely here the same. So this, this picture is real. Uh, Arizona never had a strong, long, or, or a strong sheep ranching activity, but it did have some. And this is one token from Arizona, from Ramon Berlanga. Uh, this is the only token that I have from Arizona, um, but, uh, Mr. Berlanga was actually born in Spain uh, and he married a Mexican woman. Uh, this was good for 50 sheep, so I cannot. Uh, he appears in the 1920 census uh, and I, he appears as a rancher. So just to make sure we're moving from crew sheep shearing tokens to ranch owners, because when you go to Arizona, California and Mexico, there is an exception in California, which is Santa Cruz Island. Uh, most of the sheep shearing tokens you see are uh, were used by owners who paid workers they had. Uh, no sheep, no sheep shearing crews. Uh, New Mexico um, is again like Arizona, uh, mostly a small. Uh, small operations, unlike Texas. I don't know of any, uh, there could very well be, but I don't know of any, I have followed a few of the New Mexico tokens and they're mostly farm owners. They're called estancias, which also is a, is a word used in uh, Uruguay and Paraguay for, for ranches, for both cattle and sheep ranches in South America. Uh, most of the tokens from uh, Arizona, uh, from New Mexico, are from Rio Arriba, uh, Bernalillo, or Torrance counties. Um, and, and that's that. Uh, I, I have a few Arizona tokens, I mean, New Mexico tokens from Socorro, but they're not ship shearing. They're tokens all over the place, but not particularly ship shearing tokens. Um, Again, they all have a story. Uh, this, is, this is a fairly common New Mexico uh, sheep shearing token. I would point out that I know very few pictorial crew, uh, sheep shearing crew tokens, as I show you only one, and I have quite a few from Texas. Whereas in New Mexico, there is a lot of pictorial tokens. When I say pictorial, I mean, they have a ship of some way, shape, or form. This is from Macario Torres, who turns out to be a very wealthy landowner in, uh, in New Mexico. And I just have this clip here because it tells the story that he died and he had two sons who were out of wedlock, if you will, and or outside of his marriage. And they sued the state and after losing two after losing two uh, battles in the, uh, uh, in the courts, the New Mexico Supreme Court gave them some inheritance, a lot, in fact, most of the inheritance because Mr. Torres died childless, uh, but there were nephews involved in all that. He died in 1927. So this is a token that is fairly early, uh, for, uh, fairly early use. I'm just putting that, this is, this is not a presentation that deals with the picadillos of sheep shearing uh, ranch of ranch owners, but I thought it was fun to mention. Um, again, look at these tokens here. These are New Mexico tokens. They're pictorial. They don't have as much information on them. They just have the owner of the ranch. In this case, both have, uh, Jaramillos. This is from Teofilo Jaramillo, and this is from Benceslao Jaramillo. Benceslao Jaramillo. They both are pictorials. And they don't have as much information on them as the Texas tokens. There is no phone number here. There is no address. There is no PO box, right? Uh, and so uh, 
that's just one more difference, uh, more regional difference on these tokens between the Texas tokens and the New Mexico and Arizona tokens. And the Arizona token that you saw is also, um, you know, there's just the name and the number of ship that it pays, and that's all there is to it. There is no need to have anything else. And again, there is blood. There is uh, there is uh, they're they're re relative to one another. I mean, they are fa they're family. Um, these tokens are almost identical, except that you know, at least on the ship, uh, um, they both are from the same area. Uh, and so same county at least. Uh, Mr. Benson's Lau is the father of Teofilo. So that's just a, just, a, just a. Uh, these are, I think, in my opinion, the two most beautiful tokens, ship shearing tokens that I own. They're from New Mexico. They happen to be quite rare. Uh, one of them is pictorial. It's too bad that I could not take a better picture, but this is a, a good looking ship as opposed to this one uh, and others. Um, they're beautiful. They're very well made. Um, and this is the only token that I know, the FC Chavez token that I know that uh, has the token maker right there. Uh, that was made on uh, Sao Paulo, Minnesota by, by the NW Stamps Works. I suspect this one was made there as well, but I doesn't say. I don't have any more information on that. These are fairly rare. And I will say when you have them in your hand, they're kind of nice weight to it. Uh, these are from ABQ, New Mexico. ABQ being the one of the places where Georgia O'Keeffe, for those of you who are into art, um, lived for quite a long time. And there is a museum there for that celebrates her, her work and her art, Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, but New Mexico is, again, pictorial. Look at this token here. Uh, plenty of pictorial tokens. Uh, New Mexico, unlike Texas, it has other ethnicities, I guess if you will. So in the particular case of the of Ramon Iacus, he's a Catalonian migrant. And Mr. McGillian here is uh, a Scottish migrant. Now, this token that you see here um, is a good looking token, but it has been, uh, replicated to use it mildly, it's very difficult to tell from the real deal to, um, to, to the fake ones, if you will. And so you have to be very careful with that token. It used to sell for a lot of money. Now is you can buy it for 20 bucks, uh, but you don't know your, what kind of money, you're putting good money after bad token. Um, so again, uh, New Mexico tokens, Arizona tokens, well, New Mexico tokens are different in that there's more heterogeneous uh, or origins of people who, who had uh, sheep ranches, uh, sheep ranches in Texas. Uh, they were mostly crew, uh, the crews, the ranch owners were white folk, but the crew, uh, the shipping, the sheep shearing crew was mostly made out of Mexicans. And here we are in California. Uh, this is from the Santa Cruz Island Company. Uh, I have several of them. I'm just putting these two here uh, out of Santa Barbara County. I'm really not sure if they're really ship shearing uh, tokens. It's likely, but because in, uh, the Santa Cruz Island Company had a very large ship uh, operation in right. the island. Uh, they also had other stuff, other type of livestock. And uh, is that uh, insignia on there? Is that like a brand? Yes, that is the brand. And there is a long story here. Um, there is a book, actually, uh, that describes this very well. I remember fighting, no, not fighting, 
pushing on an auction for that book. And I think uh, Mr. Hyder here won it. Uh, uh, it came with a token, by the way. I think a bill has it. Do you do you have a bill or? I I, I bought mine from the um, uh, the historical society, not not on eBay. Uh, they are still available. Um, oh really? You can order them from the uh, Santa Cruz Island. Um, it, I I can send you information about where to, where to get one if you if you want to buy one. And yeah, they I want to buy. Sharing tokens. Um, they were made on the island. They yep. were cut from brass plates that I haven't figured out what the brass plates were for, for because they had a number of, of things. They made wine, um, uh, et cetera. But the, yeah. the, uh, the 17 millimeters were for smaller sheep um, and easier sheep. The 19 millimeters were for larger sheep or sheep more difficult to, to handle. Mm -hmm. And a guy sat on a raised area with a board and distributed them as the um, mm -hmm. um, as the uh, um, the wool was brought up to be deposited, and then at the end of the day, they received uh, money for the tokens. They mm -hmm. they were hired and brought out to the island, so they had a salary plus what the money for shearing the sheep. So mm -hmm. um, they were definitely sheep shearing tokens. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just. I, I knew there could be uh, just by virtue of the fact that that there was a lot of ship in there, but I don't have the book. I've read a lot about the Santa Cruz Island Company and the different ownership and the way ownership has changed over time. Of course, now being a part of the state park, but um, um, uh, I, I, yeah. So I suspected there were ship shearing tokens, which is why they're here. Um, California has. This other token from Las Cruces, at least Capen lists this token as Las Cruces, California. I have done a little bit of search on this person name here. Turns out to be a French last name, but or at least part French. But I have not been able to find this person in any census or any other information. So where is Las Cruces or, or not? I am not 100% except that Captain say so. If Captain say so, sometimes it is so, most of the times. So I will just leave it at that. Uh, this is the All Says, uh, All Seas Ship Corral. I, this is clearly a ship ship token because it says it's good for one ship shear. But uh, this particular token was uh, used in Bakersfield, uh, Rio Bravo Ranch area uh, in Kern County. And the only thing that makes me think twice whether or not this is a sheep shooting talking is the denomination. It could very well be five sheep. But the problem is that the owner of this property also had a store, a very large store. So it could very well be for something else uh, that was part of the, of the sheep court. The Aussie Ship Corral was part of a larger business. And so I suspect it is a sheep shearing token, but I'm not 100% sure here. And I, I will have to do more search. It is listed as a sheep shearing token, but uh, doesn't make sense. So. And just to close on California is a Rancho Holama. By the way, uh, this one's, this is a, a San Francisco, uh, Moisey token, rather Patrick and company token. And so is this one here too. So this is Rancho Halama in Santa Barbara County. It really should say Halama, uh, part of Halama Beach. It's close to Halama Beach State Park in Santa Barbara County. Uh, it is listed as a sheep shearing token. It used to be a livestock ranch, not only sheep, but they also had cattle and other livestock. So, uh, but it is this has a sheep shooting token. And uh, uh, again, I can't confirm that, uh, but it's, it is not particularly common. And it's also a, a Patrick San Francisco token. So these tokens uh, really vary by uh, the, the information contained, vary by even though they have the common thread of sheep and shearing, 
they vary in terms of the design by state, more pictorial, more showing sheep, different types of sheep in, uh, in New Mexico than in Texas. And the reason that is that is because I figure if you put a sheep in Texas token, you are taking a space that could be very well used by others in terms of advertising your business, your phone number, your PO box, your address, your city, and so on and so forth. So if you have a, you know, Jaramillo token from New Mexico, it was only one place that could be used. It wasn't your ranch. Or again, uh, a Chavez token from ABQ, New Mexico, it was only one place that could be used. It was your ranch. But the Texas tokens, no, they didn't, they needed to contain more information. Uh, definitely the technology use could help you to locate, to, to play, place it on time. Tokens that are good for one ship, we're probably using manual shearers to ship, uh, to, to do the ship shearing. Whereas uh, tokens with larger denominations, and there are some that are 100 or 200 ship, uh, which I did not show, uh, could very well be that they uh, were using already electrical shearings. And there is a lot to be reading about the ethnic and family relationships among those tokens. Uh, I have not gotten to do that because that was not the purpose here, but certainly um, it's something that, that I think I will put things in, in context far better than the, the, uh, in terms of the tokens. Uh, it will be a richer conversation, I guess, if you were to do that. Um, uh, so with that, I am um, thanking you for your time. I hope you're still awake. <laughs> yes. And um, <laughs> uh, so I love these tokens. I have to tell you, man, I got a lot of, I got a lot of them. If I put them all up, I'd probably be still at it. Uh, I just find them very interesting. Um, okay. Questions? Thank you, Federico. Federico? Yes. Do you have any idea how many of these cat or sheep companies were put out of business by the sheep and cattle wars from like 1870 to 1920? Because a tremendous number of these were pushed out of business because cattle didn't won that war. <laughs> right. So you're right. So cattle won the battle. And, you know, you can witness that today. Um, oh, I'm true. You know, uh, uh, also, not only were the cattle wars, uh, South American wool was cheaper. So that kind of was the nail in the coffin as well, in the coffin as well, right? So you got a lot of Argentinian, Uruguayan wool coming up to markets here in the United States and to Europe. And so that did it in Texas. New Mexico was more resilient uh, because they were more family owned and cattle was not that big in New Mexico or Arizona. It was big, but it was not king as in Texas. And in fact, in California, I mean, California has a, you know, a large dairy, dairy sec sector in the, you look at the agricultural reports, what they're called, where they include livestock as well. Um, but, you know, when everything is said and done, cattle is no king in California. In fact, it's declining in the number of heads uh, for a whole host of reasons. So I don't know how many companies were put out in, uh, in Texas in particular. That's the place where a lot of these sheep shearing, sheep ranches went kaput. But they didn't happen in Arizona or New Mexico, as, as you will expect. Well, I know. There were more... Well, they, they, the federal government got involved with the sheep and cattle wars. It ran all the way up to Idaho and Wyoming. Remember the movie Tom Short? They, yeah. they, uh, federal government came in and basically designated what acreage could be designated for sheep and sort of constrained it down to the point where you couldn't hardly raise sheep, basically, is what it came down mm -hmm. to. So the, the answer of the federal government was, we're going to restrict you but we're going to subsidize you. So, yeah. you know, so, because, you know, the federal government couldn't just alienate so many people up in down in Texas or up in Texas or west of us, east of us. Uh, and um, so they subsidized the sheep sector for a long time. Those subsidies are now for the most part facing out 
Uh, in fact, I think it's 2022 when they will be absolutely phased out. No more subsidies for sheep. And the subsidies were uh, mostly on the uh, on the uh, on the land uh, on the land value and a lot of breaks on income and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, so they try to have it both ways, but you can't, right? So yeah. Uh, and remember, a lot of these a lot of these activities really, really do depend on the number of acreage that you are allowed to operate, unlike other rural activities. And so, uh, yeah, that's an important point. But sheep is not dead, right? So yeah, I have I have a million heads, I think, still out there. It's quite a bit. Well, the, well, the argument always was that the sheep pull the grass out of the ground by the roots and then kill the pasturage, right, as opposed to the cows just graze off the top so that sheep basically graze the ground bare and the cattle would let it grow back. So that was always the argument. But I yeah. Well, the, the problem, yeah. I mean, there, there's no way. Cattle might not pull things out of the root, from the root, but you need a lot of more acreage for cattle than what you need for sheep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No question about that. You can have a flock of sheep in a relatively small area relative to cattle. Right. And also cattle is far more, I mean, I, I do some work. Cattle is far more uh, rude or unfriendly with water sources and watersheds than sheep is. So. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I mean, it's just a fact, so. So, so Federico, just for your information, the difference between sheep and goats. Sheep are flock animals and their tails point down. Goats yeah. are solitary animals and their tails point up. Yep. Goats are associated with Satan and sheep are not. Well, Jesus, I missed that part. <laughs> You see, now I'm not going to be able to sleep well tonight, man. You got, <laughs> you got me scared here. You got goats coming after you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. How much was paid um, to shear a sheep, or how much were these tokens worth in dollars? Uh, the super early to I have no idea, but I know, I know for the fact that uh, uh, I read in the, again, the tech, at least in the Texas case, that uh, uh, crews, uh, sheep shearing crews, will go uh, away uh, for weeks on end, right? For weeks, uh, and that alcohol consumption was not allowed because otherwise <laughs> the hay will not get back in town uh, to you know to where they came from. And my understanding is that it was it was it was well paid. I mean, I I I, I would bring this next meeting. I don't know the exact amount. I will assume it was well paid. It was a good paying job in the sense that it did allow people to to make a living. Uh, these folks will married for the most part. If you read about it, um, they will leave town again. I will get the exact data. I will assume that it varies by the year. For example, the super early tokens will have a value and the super late tokens of the 40s and 50s will have a different value. So we'll have to look into that, but I have no idea. But I know that there were a lot of restrictions on the on the, on the the things you could do while you were away because crew captains also didn't want you to get drunk and get into fights and all that, right? So there was a lot of restrictions uh, on what you could do, what you were away. Um, so it will make, yeah. So I have, I don't know, but I, I suppose not bad for the job. It was not yeah. a pleasant life. It was not I a pleasant to, life. I, I know that. Well, I had to go down in value with electric shears. I watched a demonstration about two or three years ago in New Zealand where they were shearing sheep and they were spending two to three minutes per sheep with electric shears shearing them completely. It was yeah. See. Yeah. Uh, also, just uh, Doug, uh, crew, uh, members of the crew were compensated extra if, if the sheep that they work on 
was not harmed a lot. So if you were very good using those shears, uh, the ones that by hand, the ones that I showed earlier, you will get an extra, a, a bonus, if you will. Because that means that uh, the crew captain will be paid by the ranch owner and the ranch owner will inspect, making sure his ship was in good shape after the shearing process, right? You don't want to get a bunch of sheep that are hurt and that they're not treated properly and so on and so forth. So, sure. so sheep shearers were paid extra if they did a good job. Not only fast, but good in terms of, this is, this is the same thing as coffee, by the way, or, or any other uh, uh, rural activity, some of the rural activities that I'm familiar with. And coffee, when you pick coffee, if the plant, if you don't break any of the branches, you know, my grandma used to say, a branch is worth gold, then that coffee picker will be paid a little bit more. Yeah. Sure. And the same thing with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break a branch. Federico, did the uh, crew go from ranch to ranch like some of the, uh, the crop pickers go from ranch to ranch? Yes. And um, the schedule, the crew captain had to remember he was making a living of this thing and so it was a year round it was not just that you were ready to go out to the road and and uh and and go and do your shearing activities he had to have a company and well before the season which varied by ranch he had to set up a schedule his crew uh, depended on this person. The, the crew depended on this person. And when a crew captain did not have enough job, crew members will leave that crew and go to a crew that had job well planned, right? So think about this. If you are a sheep shearer and you know where you're gonna be in the next two, three months or four months, or you know where you're gonna be in March, you are loyal to that crew. But sometimes if the crew captain, meaning the owner of the business, could not set up enough, uh, enough shearing activities throughout the, the period, then he will lose employees because you didn't want to be uh, left out uh, without a job. So yes, uh, they will go from branch to branch, but he also had to set up a schedule that was fairly predictable, right? Is the area down where you, you said the, uh, the, like a sheep shearing area, is it grassy? Because it's near the Rio Grande. Yes. Uh, I would say, as I, let me just, uh, maybe I wasn't clear enough. The, the tokens that have these cities, Walde, Langtree, Sanderson, Sonora, uh, the Rio, that's where the crew is based. That's not necessarily where the sheep are, okay? So that would be their home base, if you will. And then from then they will find out to different parts of the state of Texas. So was there sheep all over Texas? Yes. Were there sheep near the Rio Grande? Yes, there was. But uh, these folks, these, these crews will travel all over the state where they, uh, where they will do the job. The city reflects where the crew is based, not where the ship shearing takes place. Okay. Is there any way to track where the crew went? Have you ever been able to do that? Uh, no, I haven't. Just for a season. Right. Uh, no, I haven't, but there is a website that talks about this. Um, and the Texas Historic Society has quite a bit of information on that, uh, on some of the narratives and they, they there is a oral host history you can listen to some of that in the texas historical society uh, uh, they, they talk about experiences you will have to kind of figure out where place they're talking about and what year to figure out i have not i have never tried to follow a crew over a year period of time i only ask because i know when i was a child i was born in arkansas and uh, right near the texas border so a lot of people I knew would follow the crops. You know, they'd pick pecans, they'd pick peaches, they'd pick cucumbers, depending on the season. So they would follow 
the crops and wherever the crops were being harvested at that time. Yeah. And a lot of times they would take the children so that the, the children could help you know, harvest everything. And kids would miss uh, the first two or three months of the school year. And then they'd show up about November or so and have to catch up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, following the crops is also a very California thing. Uh, I have friends who, who graduated from school or high school three years after the fact because they will miss so many, they will go to two schools per year or three. Uh, and they will be working on the fields. Uh, uh, that has to stop for the most part, but I would imagine, uh, I have not seen pictures of families with sheep shearing crew members. Uh, this is purely a male adult thing. If I have not read about it and I have not seen photos or or know that families actually go around. I know the guys will leave for weeks uh, mm -hmm. and then come back. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you're, are you talking, but you're mute, I think. Or are you talking, or it's me? Yeah, right. Oh, I, sorry. Yeah, I, no there, was that, there was that photo of the Navajo family where the woman was working also. Yeah, yes. But this was, uh, yes. But this this was on a ranch, right? This was not a traveling crew. The, yeah. the Navajo and, are different. The Navajo are, are are different. The Navajo made horse blankets, and Richard Weatherall, uh, in the early 1900s, had sheep and sheared them so that women could make uh, blankets, Navajo women could make blankets for sale. And eventually the Navajo uh, acquired their own sheep. And so they were, the women were raising the sheep and shearing them to make the wool for making the blankets that they were selling for trade. It was a different situation from a rancher raising sheep to sell the wool. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, the only thing I know for sure, Federico, is I've been all over Southwest and West Texas, and you can spend days looking for a single blade of grass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I would assume that during the rainy, I mean, uh, also, let me just say, sheep require less grass than cattle. And so... I have a lot less in West Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, it, it would be interesting to see, for example, something that one could explore. What would be the months uh, of sheep shearing, right? Yeah. Because that would be tied up to rainfalls and other things, to rainfall and other things probably. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like any other crop. Of course, like any other crop. Yeah. Anyway, and, any, any further questions for Federico? 